Merry Meet, Merry Part, and Merry We Meet Again. Welcome to Knitting Witchery Podcast. This is take two. Um, thank God, because I always, I even forgot to introduce the podcast. So, Knitting Witchery Podcast. Um, you can find us on YouTube at Knitting Witchery. Please subscribe. The more subscribers, the better. Um, and then you can also join us on Ravelry at Knitting Witchery um, in the Ravelry group. You can go to www.com or www.com, www.ravelry.com, and then in the search engine, go to groups, and then type in Knitting Witchery, and we will pop up. So, there you go. Today is filled with stuff, and um, I recorded, and somehow it made the screen all flipped and stuff, so I had to delete it, and I have to re-record the entire thing. And this last one was about an hour, so hopefully it's not more than an hour this time. Um, normally I have Bella here, but Bella right now is, um, she got spayed, and so she is snuggling with my husband on the couch, and she is got a cone on her head, and she is just, she's just being her. Um, so, um, yeah, Bella. If you hear me yell Bella, she's, we're trying to get her not to lick underneath her leg because her incision's farther up, but we just, anytime she licks, we just try to stop her. And then in today's day four of the Bella saga and, um, it's been fun. Uh, we have to sedate her because she is so hyper because she's been indoors for the past four days. And we tried to take her on a little walk today and she was jumping around like crazy. So we had to take her inside because she's not supposed to jump or rough house or run. And so we just don't want her pulling any stitches. So she's housebound. And um, yeah, luckily she goes on the pad. So that's good. Um, but yeah, she's housebound for 10 days. She's in hell. We're in hell too because we can't do anything for her. She's miserable. Um, the worst part is when she's really running around, we have to put her in her cage because we have to like have her calm down and she just looks at you like, why am I in here? What did I do wrong? So, um, yeah, it's been a couple of days. Um, so let's get into the podcast and knitting and everything like that. So, we have some new members. One second. Well, we have one new member. I know this new member. This new member is Katie Ince. Katie and I have been friends for over 20 years. And, um, yeah. I'm thinking that she should be a guest star on the podcast one day. Because she knits too. And she's into witchery. And so it'd be nice to have you as a guest on the podcast. So... That's something to look forward to one day, is having Katie, you as a, a guest. So, welcome to the podcast, and, um, yeah. Oh, I was like, what is she doing? Um, I was, uh, no, hang on. Sorry, I thought she was going to jump off the couch, and I wanted to stop her, so that was the noise that I make. Yeah, here she goes. Um, like we said, we're trying to get her not to jump so she doesn't pull stitches. Um, there might be a bunch of pauses in this just because she is hyper and in less than an hour we get to sedate her, so probably sedate her in like 20 minutes so it can kick in. Um, cause she's just a poor girl. Anyway, okay, so back to the group. So, we have Katie Ince, who is a new member. Now, you guys, there's the Knitting Witchery Knit Along, where we are working... It's a knit along where you knit something that's witch-related. So, it could be something with witch in the title, it could be a witch's hat, it could be an altar cloth, it, it doesn't even have to be knit. It could be crocheted, it could be sewed, it could be anything. And, um, all you have to do is at least cast it on. At least cast it on... Um, and show us that you cast something on and that you're working on something. It doesn't have to be finished. 
Um, this knit along runs into two weeks after this um, to Astara. Um, and what you can get if you post and you have the chance to win this Willow Yarn um, Quill. Its color is Sangria. It's a DK based yarn. It's 230 uh, grams. Um, it is 50% acrylic, 25% uh, merino, and 25% alpaca. There are seven balls of this. I did try to knit with them so one of the balls doesn't have a ball band. It's really great yarn. I just don't knit sweaters. I I even have some like sweaters worth of yarn and I'll explain why everything's different right there. And I really like the yarn. I really, really like the yarn, but I don't think that I'll knit a sweater with it. So I just hang on to it um, because I tried. I got really far with that yarn and um, I didn't have enough. I ran out and I was so mad because the sweater was basically done. I just had to finish the sleeve and do the, the um, pick up the ends and do the, the collar. But I didn't have enough. I knew I was going to run out. So, um, so I stopped. And I think that's why that yarn is on hold because I enjoyed working with it. It showed so great. It's great with cables. The cables just pop. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, I have this yarn and I would like to get it away. And I'd like there to be a knit along. So, um, you have two weeks. Cast something on, just work on it. It could be anything witch related. Tarot card deck, it could be a, a dishcloth, it could be whatever you want it to be. It could be something small, it could be like a little toy witch thing. The mo more po the, the more posts, the merrier. So, um, yeah, um, that's where we're at. So, um, please join, please join the knit along. There are two weeks before the knit along is done and one second she may have to go in her cage in a second yeah um so please do this knit along um it'd be great to have you join and be a part of it so yeah, um, that's that, that's the administrative stuff. Now I have a story for you guys. Now you may notice that there's a different yarn set up here. There's more, it looks like more yarn, but because you couldn't see the yarn that was below this, this shelf, it's now on this and this shelf. So I had a cabinet based yarn and I was going to have an empty one and that could be more yarn and more spots more space and I had it out here and um, Bella in the past has liked to go for my yarn but never the ones on the stand so I was like oh it's safe it's good well that was a lie because she started going for it and my husband's like she's going for it she ripped a tag off one and I'm like okay um, I'm like yeah we'll move it don't worry it'll be fine well, I waited too long because that Mecca yarn, that bulky Mecca yarn, my bulky was on the bottom. I walk into the living room from the office and there she is eating that yarn and it is a tangled mess. And I screamed out some expletives. I think I called her a name. You know, I was, she was a nasty. Um, so I spent about three hours winding the ball into a ball from the tangled mess that it once was. Thank God it was not a fingering weight yarn, because if it was a fingering weight yarn, I'm sad to say, even if it was one that I really cherished, it would be in the garbage, because there is no way I would be able to detangle it. It would be, it'd be too much. So, learned my lesson. Now, these two are yarn. These two are yarn, so I have my fingering weight, DK and Sport, worsted, bulky, slash, miscellaneous, slash, whatever. Um, which I want to just ultimately make bulky, but for right now it's my hodgepodge. Um, bulky and super bulky. Um, so, 
That's because of Bella. So I learned my lesson. Oh, below I then have like patterns and books and stuff and just miscellaneous stuff. So, um, yeah. So right now that's what we have. Uh, we're going to try to get a different entertainment center thingy. Not entertainment center, but shelf for like movies and books and stuff. Well, movies. And, um, so right now this is my yarn. One day when we move, I'm going to put it in a room and I'm going to make sure that it's a room that Bella's really never in like the office or something. And then I will be able to move this to one and have all this space for more yarn. Wouldn't that be nice? So one day I will have that and then I can have two fingering, two DK and sport, two worsted and two bulky. That's a lot of yarn. I'm excited for that. Um, but right now that's what I have. I still, I have some room for worsted, still some room for DK. My bulky hodgepodge right now, I don't really feel like buying a lot of bulky because it's just a hot mess in there. So I'd like to wait. Um, so yeah, that's the story of Bella and my yarn. So let's get into what I'm knitting. I do have a finished object, but I can't show it to you. I finished the basic witch dishcloth and currently it is washing dishes. So, well not currently by itself, that'd be cool. Um, but it's got wet and food on it and stuff, so I'm gonna wash it and then I'll show it to you guys in a different episode. But I do have a finished object, which is that dishcloth. It was a very um, great, fast dishcloth to um, knit up. Um, and yeah. Sorry if I seem distracted. Like I said, we're just trying to make sure Bella's not jumping and she's highly energized. Um, so it was really good. I liked it. I liked it. I liked the way the yarn knit up. I liked the striping pattern. Um, it was great to work with. It was a 50 gram yarn. I still have this much to knit with. So it used, I would say about half of it. So um, that's going to be part of a hodgepodge dishcloth. So what I usually do is the leftovers, I make a giant dishcloth. And, um, yeah, so there's that. That's my finished object. Now I also have a hoe. Yes, oh shit. I have this big mountain. Since I do two weeks, now I have big mountains. Um, my hoe is this sock. I finished it. Took me friggin' forever, but I finished it. Um, so, yeah. I finished the sock, and I do not like this yarn. I don't like it, but I'm going to one day finish the second sock. This is an absolute hibernation. One day when I'm feeling like, you know what? I gotta clean things out again. I will work on that sock and get it done. I don't like how it knits up. I don't like how it feels. It's too tight. Not too tight on my foot, but actually I haven't tried it on, so. Um, I don't think it's too tight on my foot. Um, we're about to find out. That would suck. That would really suck if this, like, somehow didn't fit my foot. Well, if it's nice, it's smooth. It, it's a nice sock to wear. It's warm, but I just don't like it. So I don't like knitting with it, so it's permanently on hold. I don't like the way it, it, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with the yarn. It's just not my cup of tea. So that's a hoe on hold. So there's that one hoe and one day it will be a pair of socks. No time soon because I really have all this. I would like to make socks out of. So I'm not going to waste right now energy on that. One day I will when I'm feeling up to it. And that's that but I have more on the needles. I think everything I have on the needles you've never seen before. Yes, because I have three things on the needles. Four things on the needles, one you've seen before. So we'll get into that. I have socks. Now, the first one is finishing a pair of the spider socks. And so I started the second one. I love the pattern. 
I love the Madeline Tosh yarn. This is before I started the podcast. I had this, so I don't know what the yarn is um, called. But it's this blue. It's vibrant. Um, and, um, yeah, it's great. So, um, now I have messages popping up on my phone. I, ugh. It was way better the first time, but you're getting it the second time. So, uh, I am done with the cuff and I started the body and this is the back end. It does this twisted rip and then the front end and I will start the cabling the next row. So, um, not the cabling, but the, the pattern and the cabling will happen soon. Um, so that's that one sock it's it's fun to work on but i have to do it when i have kind of the ability to completely concentrate when bella's asleep so i can work on it at night um so i just keep it in a drawer and i work on it when i can and it's addicting i want to keep working on it because it just it goes very fast the directions are really well written um this yarn is smooth and fun to work with um, so I really, really enjoy making these socks, and I can't wait to have them off the needles because they're super cool, and I can't wait to wear them. So I am really enjoying working on this pair of socks. I'm going to put that there. I have a second pair of socks. I don't think I've showed you these. I don't know if I have. I feel like I have, but I don't know if I have. They are just a pair of vanilla socks, but this is out of the cat people yarn and um this is how it's ending up ironically and not ironically enough but surprisingly enough it's making kind of a striped pattern you know it's like dark warm colors cool colors warm colors and um i love these colors i love knitting with this yarn this is the colors are just beautiful and bright and just you know it's a mindless knitting sock, so I can just knit on it. I don't want to stop. I I just love it. The yarn is so smooth. and s This is my life. Um, so, so smooth and soft, and I can't wait to wear these socks. Like, it's a great motivator to be like, I want to wear these socks. So, speaking of socks, I have found actually that knitting on size one needles, I didn't mind how they felt. I wore them the other day and they felt really snug and nice. So I don't mind knitting on size one needles. And if ever I want to have three socks on at the same time, I'll just cast on using my one size ones. There are ladders, but when you're wearing them, you don't really notice it. And who cares? They're socks. If anyone said to me, those have ladders, I'd be like, well, you're an asshole. So there's that. Um, so those are my socks and I could have a third pair of socks on the needles and work on that. So, um, yeah, um, mm -hmm. those are my socks. The third one I've really been working on. This is the Apex hat and I've been using the leftover Eco or Encore that I use for my, um, Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, that's why. Okay. I was confused for a minute. Um, my nephew's block, and I had a bunch left over, so I'm making this hat, and it's the Apex hat, and I'm about 80% uh, done. I have, like, five more rows of the pattern. It's a great pattern, very simple. Um... And then uh, I have the D. Probably like maybe a few, uh, like a few rows of just the plane and then the decreases or just the decreases. I don't know. So I'm like 80% done with this hat. I like it. I like how it's knitting up. I like the yarn. Um, I'm knitting on Addie's. Um, so these were side eight. They are kind of like an 8.5. It's weird. Um, so... And when I got them, because they're old, they're, they're like the first pair of Addies I ever bought. And they were kind of like from sweat and stuff, really kind of like gritty. And I was like, oh God, it's not smooth anymore. I'm going to hate working with this. I'll have to throw it out. 
these puppies, as I've continued to work with them, have gone smooth again. So if your Addies feel like a little rough or gritty or you're like, oh, they're worn down, no, just keep working with them because it'll smooth itself out. It's really kind of cool. I don't know how it does it. I don't know why it does it, but they're smooth again. And I love working with Addies. What I'm trying to do is upgrade my needles because I can, because I have the ability to and the finances to. I'm doing it slowly. Um, so it's not like I'm just buying random needles. Um, what I do is when I start a project, if I don't have the needles, I buy the needles in Addy or Chaiku that I need. And then I add them to my collection. I had worked for a long time with like the needles you get from like Walmart and Hobby Lobby and Joann's. Uh, I don't mind Clover actually. I don't like the how the cables twist and stuff, but the metal needles, I with the paint on it and it scrapes off, it makes this horrible feeling. It's so gritty and the cords are always like twisted and hard to maneuver and I've done that. And you know what, if I spend a little more money on needles that I'm going to enjoy working with and that work for me, I'm going to do that because why not? So I would say if you're looking for good quality needles, Addies definitely, I think those are the like staple. Then you have Chaiku. I don't mind the um, Carbons, I think Knitter's Pride. Double points, I love Chaiku. I don't think Addie has metal double point needles. If they do, I want to try them. And then Knitter's Pride, I have a bunch. And those are very nice. If you like a short point, those have a short point. Um, I like Chaigu because they have the 1.5s. And I love my 1.5s for my, my socks. So, big fan of Chaigu. Um, so that's kind of like what I'm trying to make all my needles. Um, yes, would it be easy to do and cheaper to probably do the... Um, uh, what is that called? Um, the, hold on, I think she's gonna jump. Okay, sorry. Drugged my dog. I think I was talking about this hat. Yes, but I don't remember what I was saying. All I know is I like working on this hat. It goes fast, it's color work, which keeps it entertaining. Um, here's my stitch marker. It's a witch's shoe. Um, so, um, it goes fast. It Oh, the Addy, I was talking about the needles, the needles I like. And so, yeah, basically I'm redoing my needles. Oh, and I don't think I would do um, interchangeables because I'd be afraid like the cord would break or it'd get unsnagged and stuff. I'll just, I'll just buy a bunch of needles. I don't care. That's just how I roll. At first I really was like, I want interchangeables, but now I'm just like, mm, not really because if if it gets jammed or you know breaks or locks or something I don't know I just I'll just use the ones the the way the way God intended them to be um so yeah working on this hat I love it it goes fast I want to finish it this weekend because it will get Pardon me. Uh, more yarn off my shelf, but I also think I want to do. Whoa, whoa pardon me. Um, a three color work pair of mitts because then I can have mitts to go with the hat. I don't think they have like an apex mitts. Maybe they do. I'll look it up. But um, I think I want to do a color work mitts too, and then I have mitts that go with the hat. I really like the corresponding colors with like uh, solid so if I do like a scarf I like to have a hat that goes with it um, with the solid yards that I get from the knit crate so um, yeah um, so that's that the last thing I've been knitting on and it's gonna take a second to get is my blanket. I've done a little bit more on this. I should probably get a stitch marker. Let me show that real quick. I'm gonna put this little star that I got 
and it's going to be my marker of my progress and then you guys can see how far I got. I can open this up. Super talented. Whoever says that education is important is a lie because I have my master's degree, but I can't open a plastic bag. So, like that. Um, so let me just put this marker somewhere. Hopefully it doesn't get lost. There we go. Okay. Now I have a little stitch marker with my progress. Um, I've got two new yarns going from the last time that I showed you. I have, um, Thistle, which is a lighter green. This is all tangled, so I'm not even going to try. And then, um, maybe I will. Thistle. And then I have Highlighter. I think it's called Highlighter. But, um, the Highlighter was a pair of socks. The Thistle was a, <laughs> I knit the shawl. And I did it on smaller needles because I was like, oh, it's just a needle size down. This thing is like a shawl for a baby doll. I have to give it to my niece because she likes dolls and I'm thinking she can wrap her baby doll in it. It is so freaking small. It's ridiculous. It's It can't even fit a child. That's how small it is. And I'm like, and I worked really hard on it and I did really well. There's like a row or two where I messed up and it looks a little funky. Um, but all in all, it was like probably the best shawl I ever made. Um, and it's miniature, so. So that's everything I've been working on. I've been working on a lot, you guys. And, um, yeah, I continue to work on stuff. I like doing two weeks because I feel like I make more progress. Um, sometimes at the end of the week, I'm like, oh, I really didn't do anything. And other weeks, I'm like, God, I did a lot. But two weeks, you definitely will be able to see a lot more. Um, so that's what I'm going to stick with. And it gives me more time to do witchy stuff and get witchy stuff created and stuff like that. So, um, so that's what I've been working on. Now, I have some new things. I know, you're like, Michael, you said you're not getting any new things, that you're going to be, you know, more conscientious and stuff. Well, let me just tell you that, A, one of them is Knit Crate, which it just comes every month and I pay for it every month. And I wasn't going to stop that. And the other one is my March yarn. And I am going to wait till April to buy more yarn. Because I don't need to buy more yarn. Yes, I do, but I don't. Um, so, um... Sorry. Oh, that's lovely. Um, Pop-ups just keep popping up and then I read them and then I get distracted. Um, so, yeah. So I, I, I'm within reason. The other thing is that I'm more financially stable than I thought I would be at this point, and um, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm still pretty good. And I've been saving money, and so, you know, every once in a while, I have the ability to, you know, buy a skein of yarn, because I have been saving, and, um, if that's something that I want to do and it makes me happy, um, you know, it's it's 25 bucks to 30 bucks that I like to spend because you know me, I'm kind of a yarn snob, but it's worth it to me. I like I like the finer yarn. That's okay. But you know what? Um, for what I do as a living, and you know, I I enjoy um, sometimes that looking at something and getting it and opening it and having something new and refreshing because especially when you hear a lot about trauma and things that are bad and abuse and stuff sometimes just getting something that's pretty in this world it just it just means a lot and knitting is very therapeutic for me so it's not something that I'm just there was a podcast I don't get this there was a podcast out there, and I forget the name of the podcast. She doesn't knit, but she buys a bunch of yarn. But she doesn't knit with it. She collects it. She doesn't know how to knit, but she buys it. A, 
that's totally unfair. Because if there's a skin of yarn that I want and you want and you buy it before me and you just want to have it to, to have, that's rude. That's gluttonous and rude. Second off, yeah, I mean, that's just, it, like, I don't get it. But, I mean, then again, people collect Pokemon cards and they don't play Pokemon, so I guess, you know, I don't know, to each their own. And it doesn't, like, increase with value in time. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know if she gives it to people as, like, a gift, like, hey, I know you knit, so here's your Christmas gift. Maybe she does that, and that's great. But she's tearing at your blanket. Um, but, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand her. I don't get her. I, I personally think it's rude because there's plenty of us who do like yarn and for you to buy something and be like, isn't this pretty? I love it. I wouldn't do anything with it. I'm just going to have it. Is, to me, it's selfish. And maybe you can make a comment and be like, that's very judgmental or whatever. But that's just my opinion. I just, I mean, yeah. It'd be like, so I'm buying a bunch of witchcraft tools and you want like the certain athame because it's beautiful and they, they buy it and they're like, I don't, I'm not a witch. I don't practice. I just buy things. I just bought it. I'm not going to use it at all. I mean, that'd be, to me, that's a little rude. Um, so yeah, that's my little rant. Um, so my new stuff. I got my March yard is, let me know, make a comment. I love comments. So people comment because it's interaction and I love interaction. I got my March yard. And this is called, and let me know if you know what movie it's from, I am, not a, I am Not a Witch, I'm Your Wife. And this is the colors. It's from Little Fish Stitches. And it is a sport weight yarn. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 3-ply, three 320, 28 or 28 yards. Um... Yeah, so this is my March yarn, and I love it. So it can go to my DK pile. Then I got from my Knit Crate. I love Knit Crate. Okay, and I'll tell you why. Again. Um, Audine Rules, Calm, in the m Moose colorway. Like chocolate mousse. Um, it is a DK weight. It is 80% wool, 10% silk, 10% mohair. This is definitely going to be a shawl, I think. I don't know. Probably. Um, or a sweater. A little baby sweater. Maybe I'll make my nephew's sweater out of this because my sister had a baby. So, time to make a sweater. Um... And it is 200 and, no, that's meters. Jeez. 231 yards, and it is soft and squishy and great. And here's why I love Knit Crate. This is some good quality yarn. It's got mohair in it, um, wool, um, and so, I want to say a month for the two for the not sock it's I thought it was 20 but maybe it's 40 a month but even if it's 40 a month it's totally worth it because if you think about it that yarn most likely in a yarn store is probably about $25 23 25 somewhere around there I don't think it's gonna be less than that um, so you have two skeins, so it's $40. So let's say it's $25. You then have $50, so you're paying 10 less than you would in a yarn shop. Plus you got tax, so you knock that off. And it always comes with a little goodie, a stitch marker. Um, I got a measuring tape this time. So if you get, and it's in the shape of heart. So if you get a cutesy-dootsy measuring tape, that's probably going to add another, like, 
five bucks to your thing. So for 58 bucks, you get, for 40 bucks, you get the quality and um, product of $58. We just lost our dog. One second. Oh, there she is. Oh, she's chewing on a pineapple. Okay. Um. We need to get silent, more silent chips. I know. Um. So that's why I love Knit Crate. And it's fun. And it comes to your door and it's solid yarns. I generally don't buy solid yarns. So now I have, well, I do buy them because I pay for the kit crate but um it's not like i would go purposely and get those solid yarns so it's great to have um so that's that um so that's my new stuff and that's the knitting section so i'm gonna pause and we have a tarot reading coming up and we have um a witchy section coming up and I have to, I think we may have to cage Bella for a minute. All right, we'll be back. Welcome back everyone. We have a tarot reading and then I'm gonna share with you um, Bella's spell jar, which one second I have to get a book. Run drawer. Okay. So, on TikTok, I'm not a big TikTok person, but I stumbled upon this. Uh, I stumbled upon this person named Madam Adam three one four something like that. Um, just look up Madam Adam. I think it will show. And he does tarot reading card tarot reading, and um, he does uh, randomly. He'll do video. I think daily videos of three card spread, and totally taking from that and I'm not ashamed because my goal is to help me learn my tarot and read tarot better um, I'm getting comfortable to the point where like I look at cards and I kind of can feel or sense what the energy is but I don't have the cards memorized so I don't want to get false information I can look at the card and kind of tell from the picture what's being depicted um, but I don't know the card well enough and I don't want to uh, do a misreading and have it refer to something completely different. And if you hear Bella crying in the background, she has to be in her cage because she's jumping around and she's antsy. So I'm going to do a three card reading and um, this is what the day brings and if it pertains to you it does and if not then it doesn't I just want to practice and this is what I'm feeling for the day so all right moon four swords Five of Pentacles. Okay. My big book. Practice. Okay, so the moon. Moon is one that I am not that familiar with, so. Moon. Illusion. Mystery. Makes sense. It's the moon. Um intuition understanding of things so lunacy dreams deception strangeness and events so things are very mystical right now things are uh, mysterious um they are guided by um the cosmos um psychic flashes dreams um things like that things that are your intuition are guiding you um uh, four of swords Stability of mind and thought, sleeping well, vigilance, and need, needed withdrawal, exile, tomb, coffin, regeneration, darkness of the mind. So you're sleeping well, you're having, you know, your, your intuition is guiding you, you're getting a good amount of sleep, um, 
your mind is stable and thoughts, you know, don't doubt what your intuition is or if you're having kind of, you know, psychic things going on because your mind and your thoughts are aligned. You're not going crazy. You know, it's more than coincidence. You are attuned and checking in. Your thoughts are in order. You're getting a good amount of sleep. Um, you're rested. Um, you're guided. Trust your thoughts. Trust your feelings. Oh, here's the moon. Four of Swords. Five of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles is one of poverty, one of loss, but also semi-ignorance because here at the church you can easily get help, get shelter, but you're choosing to ignore that option. Um, let me see if there's anything I'm missing. Poverty, yes. Um, feelings of sorrow and loss, material considerations, love, lovers, a relationship, wife, husband, friend, lover, even business partnership represents the ups and downs of long-term relationship. So, it looks like even though things are poor right now or there's poverty and things that you have going on, trust your intuition, trust your, your thoughts are aligned. So that can even go into... You know, here they, they are, they're outside and they have this help. If if things are guiding you and saying, go in this direction, and you're like, well, things are really crappy right now, you know, and don't bask in that. Don't wallow. Don't look at just the poverty. Look at the hope. Look at the opportunity. And if your gut is saying, go for it, know that you are in the right mind to go for it. So don't let things that are going poorly right now cloud your judgment, cloud your intuition. Go with your gut. You're aligned, bing, bang, boom. So that is the reading of the weeks. All right. So every time my husband wins a level, he does this happy dance, and I'm seeing him do the happy dance, and it's so cute. I can't open plastic bags. I can't open wooden boxes. Fellas, stop eating your blanket group made that for you okay speaking of Bella what I did this past week was a protection jar for Bella and I'll share with you how I made this protection jar I made it on uh, last weekend and Bella had her surgery on Tuesday and I wanted to I wanted to do this before um, she went into surgery to make sure that she was safe and that her surgery went well and that she was well so I created a protection jar. Now what I did is I, on the glass star, jar, you can't really see it. Um, I don't know why, they just didn't really show up. But I car I carved, I with a brown marker, brown represents animals. I drew different sigils. I drew a pentacle, I drew a sigil for safety with pets, um, protection, uh, um, yeah, all, all sigils that kind of a rune of protection, uh, just symbols to encompass what's in it with protection. Then I had three round candles. I um, sketched in a sigil for protection of pets in the candles, and I lit the candles, burned the candles while I was doing the spell. So what I did is I started out with salt at the bottom, as a base, a base of purification, a base of protection. I wanted that salt to be a strong foundation. Um, I put in Bella's teeth, um, baby teeth, because um, I wanted a part of Bella. Now, if you have an older dog, you know, cut a bit of their fur off, you know, um, a picture of them, whatever you want to somehow make an essence of them. Uh, we had our baby teeth, so I did that. Then I put in their batter's tooth, now, what I want from this protection spell is not only for Bella to be safe, but if someone tries to go after her, if someone tries to do something to put her in danger, um, they'll be, the protection will kind of like bite back at them. Um, kind of like the way I see it is um, when you're walking in a fun house and the house of mirrors and you think you're walking down, you know, a corridor and you bang into a mirror, 
that's what I want. I want someone to, if they try to go at her, to be like, whoa, and kind of have a bite back at them for something to knock them on their ass because they tried to hurt my baby girl. So I put in the badger's tooth for that bite. Um, I added star anise right away because I wanted that star of protection. Stars are a uh, symbol of, of grounding, of protection. So I wanted that, her to have that. Um, I did, and many people might find this controversial, but this is what I did. I added a few drops of my blood. I wanted the power of a witch to really just... I wanted this infused with power. This to be... Um, to have that. So I put a few drops of my blood in there. Um, it's a very kind of old school thought of mine using like body liquid. Um, sometimes people for... When they're doing like a spell jar of like a, a hexing jar or something, they may like... Um, someone who's brought them pain, they'll put, like, rusty needles, they may pee in the jar or spit in the jar, um, because, you know, um, the body is very powerful, um, so, you know, bodily fluids are, you know, important. Some people may disagree with that or think it's taboo or whatever, but I did it. I wanted everything, I wanted it all in there, and then, you know, you have the four elements, you have earth, the herbs, you have air, the smoke, you have, um, fire, the candles, and you have water, the blood. So I wanted everything. I wanted this to be empowered and infused. Then what I did is I took, went through my herb collection and I took every herb that I own that represents protection. I did a tablespoon and I kept doing it until I filled up the jar. Um, I thought I filled it all the way, but there's still room in there. But then I, what I did was I put salt at the top to um, kind of create a bookend. And ironically, I, weirdly enough, and I find it fascinating, the salt is making its way down. Um, and I, I kind of wonder what that means. It feels like it's saying something to me, um, you know, that it's mixing it in. But I wanted that bookend, um, that solid bookend of protection. Then what I did was I took the wax, the candle, one of the candles from the ones that I was burning, and I covered the lid with um, wax. Then with the wet wax in the middle, I stuck the candle on the jar, solidified it with more wax so the the candle would stay, and I waited for the candles to burn down, and then I knew the spell would be done. So that's how I got the wax to cover the jar and to do that so um that's how I did my protection jar now people say for protection jars you can bury them so that way they're in the ground and untouchable or you can keep them somewhere safe I've decided to keep it somewhere safe I keep it on my altar when we move this year I'm going to keep it with me I will move it myself I'm not going to put it in the moving truck um this will be protected by me. It will be guarded. Um, it's very important to me. It's important for Bella. So I will um, ensure that it's fine. And you can hear Bella because she wants out of her cage. Let's see if... She, no, because he's got food and she'll jump for the food. Um, so that's that. That's how I made that spell jar. And that's what I'm going to do with it. Now, I was thinking about this as I went through the Cyclopedia of Magical Herbs. You can easily do this spell jar, the protection jar, um, and be in the broom closet. A lot of them are also kitchen herbs. So you have bay, you have basil, cinnamon, curry, coconut. So you can easily make a spell jar with those ingredients that you may find in your kitchen. And just get a mason jar. It doesn't have to be a big one. I wanted a big one. Um, and you can do protection jars for anything. For yourself, for your pets, for your house, for your family. Whatever you want it to be. You just kind of need the basic things of, I would say, salt. Um, some embodiment of the person or things. So if it's family, you know, a picture of you and your family. Um, 
herbs and candles and um you know the candles come in all shapes and sizes so if you wanted you know small candles you can do that um but that's what i did so next week i think what i'm gonna do no not next week two weeks from now is ostara so i'm gonna do something with that i'll redecorate my altar uh, maybe we'll paint some eggs um that'd be fun and that's what we'll do is paint some eggs and um <laughs> later on eat them um but just have some eggs that are, are painted. I don't know how long boiled egg, eggs like last for before they smell, so I don't want to um, have them around too long, but just something to celebrate. So um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, marry me, marry part, and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys in two weeks. Bye.